Okay, so we're going to be discussing Article 6 to 10. We we'll start first with Article 6. So what is Article 6? Article 6 pertains to the stages of execution, consummated, frustrated, and attempted felonies. So why do we have to determine all of these uh, stages of execution? So that the court may be able to impose the proper penalty. Well, so this is uh, a crime. Uh, uh, this is under the revised penal code. And we determine the stages of execution as well as the persons criminally uh, liable, the principals, accomplices, and accessories in order to arrive at the proper penalty to be imposed. So Article uh, 6 states that uh, in so far as consummated felonies, no, when all the elements necessary for its execution and accomplishment are present. So madali lang yun. But what we need to determine is the attempted and frustrated felonies. Of course, uh, this is the general rule. No? There are cases where um, we do not have any, uh, we, we don't have these uh, stages of execution. Like um, in physical injuries, we do not have um, attempted frustrated uh, stages. And uh, we also have, uh, we do not also have a frustrated uh, felony in our in arson so there is no frustrated arson as well so but the general rule is that we we follow all this nah? so let's go to the development of a crime so we have the um internal acts, external acts, and under the external acts are preparatory acts, and after that will be the acts of execution. So the question is, are internal acts punishable? No? Are internal acts punishable? No. Is that a general rule or an absolute rule? That is an absolute rule. Meaning to say there is no exception. So you can think of any crime for as long as it stays in your mind. No, no external overt act, then you're not a criminal. So it's not punishable for as long as it stays in your mind. Now remember in Dolo, we have uh, mens rea. Mens rea and actus rea. So the criminal mind and a criminal act must go hand in hand. So those two must concur. Magkasama sila. If, if one only has a criminal act, mind but do not have any criminal act, then no criminal liability. So uh, for as long as no external acts are manifested. Now, if one, can there be a criminal act? Yes. Without a criminal mind? Yes. In the absence of uh, intelligence. No? Uh, limbawa, a 10-year-old boy who killed another his classmate, a 10-year-old boy. Is there a criminal act? Yes. No, somebody was stabbed. Is there a criminal mind? No, because the age of the child is only 10 years of 10 years old. So according to Jov Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act, if the age of the child is 15 years old and below, there is no criminal liability. Okay, so internal acts are not punishable and um, it's an absolute rule. If in the bar examination, uh, you were asked, are external acts punishable? Are external acts punishable? It's not, um, well, it depends, no? It depends. Because there are two types of uh, external acts, preparatory acts and acts of execution. So ang tanong, are, ex, uh, are ex, ex, uh, preparatory acts punishable? No, right? Um, 
is this an absolute rule or a general rule? No, this is just a general rule, meaning to say there is an exception. No, and what is the exception? The exception is when it is when there is a law that punishes such act. A person is not liable for uh, attempted, frustrated, or uh, consummated uh, felony because these are just preparatory acts. Now, if you were going to say that is there a criminal liability? Yes, and the basis is because of that law. That law violated. No, that law that that punishes that particular act. Are external are acts of execution punishable? Yes. When you talk about acts of execution, you talk about attempted, frustrated, and consummated felonies. So if it's already an act of execution, then um, it's punishable. It probably would be an attempted, a frustrated, or a consummated felony. Now, if that is a preparatory act, of course, it's a general rule. You just check if there's a law that punishes it. If there's no law that punishes the same, then it's not uh, no criminal liability. So, for, say, for example, uh, husband, each husband intended to kill his wife. Uh, the way to... Uh, the way to kill his wife is to use an insecticide which he will place on, on perhaps the food no on of the value and etc and and uh, this is his intention to kill his wife was made known to the police officers so uh when he was in 7-eleven and after buying an insecticide no by God, he was apprehended by the police and he was arrested arrested because sabi ng police we know your criminal intent no you know your your criminal intent to kill your wife that is why you 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 bought this insecticide no it's not going to be used for the insects but you're going to use to poison your wife and so we are now arresting you okay question no, is the actuation of the police officer in arresting H proper or not? The answer is not. Right? Why? Because the buying buying an insecticide is just a preparatory act. And there is no law that punishes the buying of an insecticide. Tapos. No, when you're asked, then that's your answer. There is no law that punishes the same. So mere preparatory acts are not punishable. Illustration number two. Are intended to rob X by going inside uh, the house of... He planned to get inside to break the door so that he will be able to get inside the house of X at 2 o'clock in the morning because he knows that at that time uh, X is, the, is um, sleep, deeply asleep. So to break this door, no, he 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 had in his possession uh, a possession of pick locks. So may pick locks yeah. The purpose is to get inside so that he'll be able to break, the, uh, enter, open this door, and uh, commit the crime of robbery. Now, once he was in possession of pick locks, R was apprehended. Question, is he criminally liable? Or the first question, is he liable for an attempted felony? Attempted robbery. Okay? Liable ba siya? So, ang tatanong ninyo, is that a preparatory act or an or only acts of execution? Wala pa naman, di ba? Di ba? Kaka... kaka uh, held niya lang ng pick locks. No? So at that time, it's just a preparatory act. 
So he is not liable for attempted robbery because that is not deemed as an act of, exec act of execution. No, sa bahay pa lang naman siya. Eh. Wala pa naman siya sa bahay, sa premises ng House the X. Question. Okay. But is he liable for any crime? Yes. What? Illegal possession of pick locks. Why? Because there is a law that punishes that act of possession of pick locks. So illegal possession of pick locks ang liability niya. The person has criminal liability because there, are, there is a law that punishes that particular act. But he will not be liable for attempted robbery because that is not part of an act of execution. It's still a preparatory act. Okay, remember that. Now let's go to um, subjective phase and the objective phase. Okay, dapat pala straight line to. When you talk about subjective phase, it it it, it usually refer it is it refers to the attempted stage. You talk about uh, objective phase, it refers to a frustrated one or probably could uh, refer to a consummated. Okay. When is there an attempted felony? The time that he commences the commission of the offense up to the time that he still has control. No? He can exercise control. He can control the consequence of his act. So that if he desisted, if he desisted, then he will not be liable, not liable for attempted felony. Now, if it passes through the objective phase, when you talk about the objective phase, when a person no longer has control, no control. Dito, may, itong, ano niya, may control pa siya. Pag lumagpas ng control niya, meaning to say, uh, it's no longer dependent upon him, no, the, the, the consequences. So this could uh, be frustrated or, as I mentioned, uh, consummated. So if he if aim uh, um, pointed his gun on B and he still has control, he desisted. So he'll not be liable, right? He is for attempted because it is what uh, based on his spontaneous desistance. Remember, sa attempted, no. Go to the codal provision. When the offender commences the commission of uh, an act of a, a felony directly by overt act and does not perform all acts of execution which would produce the felony, what is the reason why it was not uh, produced? For reasons uh, other than his spontaneous desistance. So in the, in the, in the, the crime was not produced for reasons not attributable to his desistance. No? So he has nothing to do with it. So if he has, if, if the crime um, was not produced because it is depend, because of his own spontaneous desistance, then he will be not liable for attempted. Kung merong spontaneous desistance, no attempted. If the crime is not produced because of uh, reasons other than his spontaneous desistance, then there's attempted. So ito, anywhere in, the, in this uh, uh, phase where he still has control, 
and if he desisted, then uh, attempted. The person has no control. Like if it's if if the wound inflict inflicted is a mortal wound, no, eh, wala na siyang control don. So objective phase na yon. Uh, to make it clear, uh, let's go to attempted. As I've said, number one, uh, the offender commences the commission of a uh, felony directly by overt. So there must be an overt act or acts. And he does not perform what? All acts of execution which would produce uh, the felony. So number three, no, uh, it, crime is not produced. No, the, the the crime is not produced, uh, or it's not uh, consummated. What is the reason why the crime is not produced? For reasons, as I mentioned, and this is important, is other than his spontaneous desistance. Again, if there's spontaneous desistance, then it's not attempted. How will you compare this one to... Um, To frustrated felony. So frustrated, uh, he had what? He had performed all acts of execution. So that's there lies the basic difference between the two. Say attempted, the magic word is does not perform all acts of execution. In frustrated, he had performed all acts of execution. Okay. On the third uh, element, the same thing, it's not produced. But the reason why it was not produced is different. So what is the reason why it was not consummated or produced for reasons what? Um, independent of the will of the perpetrator. Okay. So remember that. So the reason why it was not produced is because it is independent of the will of the perpetrator. Meaning to say it has nothing to do with it. If the crime is not produced because it is dependent upon him, it's not frustrated. In, but for as long as he performed all acts of execution. In so far as um, attempted is concerned, he does not perform all acts of execution and the reason uh, and it was not produced the crime was not produced because other than his phone this spontaneous desistance okay um what am i i not clear because i am what i'm trying to drive at i'm trying to drive out is uh the reason it why why it was not consummated in attempted is that uh, for reasons other than his spontaneous, spontaneous desistance. In frustrated, the reason it was not produced is for reasons uh, independent of the will of the perpetrator. Now, do not interchange one from the other. Uh, tatandaan nyo, do not, uh, do not interchange one from the other. There are students no, who interchange the definition of one from the other. We don't talk about spontaneous desistance in the frustrated stage. Kung merong frustrated 
uh, kung, kung nasa frustrated uh, stage na yan, and there is spontaneous desistance, that is already immaterial. No? We, do, we have nothing, spontaneous desistance no, has nothing to do with it. It will not be appreciated. It will only be appreciated in the frustrated. Uh, uh, it will only be appreciated sa at attempted felony. So it will be wrong if you argue your answer that you're, we're talking about frustrated felony and what you keep on uh, saying spontaneous desistance. No, yun ang common mistake. Ang i-argue mo sa frustrated, whether it is dependent or the independent of the will of the perpetrator. Okay, remember that. Now, illustration number one. A pointed his gun on the person of B. There was intent to kill. Oh, pag may intent to kill yan, it uh, could be frustrated, uh, it could be a homicide or murder. No? But when he pointed his gun on the person of B to kill B, no? he suddenly had a cha uh, change of heart. So sabi niya, um, he, um, he thought that if I kill B, then... Um, I will only be prosecuted and I'll just spend the rest of my life in jail. So he this so in other words he he did he desisted already. No, he did not uh, should be. So question is A criminally liable? Liable ba si A? He pointed his gun and he um desisted from killing me. Okay? Question, is he liable for attempted um, murder or attempted uh, homicide? This is the case, baby. May attempted felony ba rito? No, you check on the elements. Okay, he, did he commence the commission of a felony directly by overt act? Yes, because he, he had a gun and he pointed this gun on the person of B. So check. Second, did he perform all, 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 all acts of execution or did not perform all acts of execution? He did not perform all acts of execution. Why? He only pointed his gun on the person of B. Check. Okay. So the crime was not produced. B, B was not uh, killed. What is the reason? Is it um, uh, based on other than his own spontaneous desistance, or he has spontaneous desistance. Meron siyang spontaneous desistance, di ba? He desisted from shooting B. So it cannot fall under other than his own spontaneous desistance. Ergo, he's not liable for attempted felony. So he's not liable for attempted, uh, for straight, uh, attempted homicide or attempted murder as the case may be. Ang tanong, did he commit any crime? If he did not commit an attempted felony, did he, is he liable for any other crime? Is he criminally liable for any crime? He is. And what is that? He's liable for grave threat. Because the act of pointing a gun on another person, that already constitutes the crime of grave threat. But he is not liable for attempted uh, felony. Why? Because there was spontaneous desistance on his part. No? Ano mo significance of spontaneous desistance? Because it is a form of a reward given to a person who is about to commit a crime but heed no, the call of his, conscious, of his conscience. He heed the call of his conscience and return to the path of righteousness. Okay, allow din ng batas natin. Second. This time almost the same A in, with intent with intent to kill, no pointed his gun on the person of B. Limbawa, this is a wall. He fired this he fired a shot. 
no? So, binar, buma, binaril niya si B. Pero he missed. Tumama sa wall. It did not hit B. Is A criminal liable for attempted? Okay. Uh, let, let's go back again to the elements of the crime which I've shown you before. Did he or did he not uh, uh, commence the commission of the crime? By any overt act? Yes. Uh, the, same, the same argument as that of the one. He pointed his gun on the person of B already. No? He had a gun and pointed his gun. Secondly, uh, he, he, did he uh, perform all acts of execution or not? He did not. No, he did not because he missed. So pagka nag ka, it means to say that uh, it, you, 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 you're not able to perform all acts of execution to kill another person. So you need to shoot him again. And hoping that this time, no, it will hit me. Oh, oh. Diba? So in this case, you can would consider, because there's something left to be done still, then it will be deemed as, atten as um, uh, attempted. He did not perform all acts of execution. So is he liable for are he liable for attempted felony? Yes. No, uh, all the elements are here. No, be still alive. It's because uh, uh, a miss, and it is not because of any spontaneous desistance on the part of a. I hope this is clear to you. Next, third, a. Intend to kill, pare pareho sila. Almost the same but not identical. Part again is uh, gun on the person of B. And it, it hit B. Sa ante naman si B? Sa finger lang. Nambawa, dito lang sa finger. Or sa fingertip lang. Okay, dito lang. Mamamatay si B or hindi? Is it fatal or not? Hindi, di ba? So, is there something left to be done again to, to kill B? If A, live, if A lives, umalis siya, would B survive? Yes, because no, it's, it's, uh, it's only an injury, a minor injury. So, it's, it's, not, it's not fatal, not mortal, or not fatal, sabi ng iba. Uh, it's not fatal, it's not mortal. So, is there something left to, to, to be done? Yes. Because he, the, here, he did not perform all acts of execution because the wound inflicted is not a mortal. One. So these two would be the same. We would arrive at the same conclusion that it's still attempted. And I'm just I'm trying to emphasize you know, so that you will understand what is the meaning of the word does not perform all acts of execution? If the injury is not fatal, it's a not mortal, no? And that we would deem that uh, the person had not performed all acts of execution, which would produce the felony. Okay, number four. A shot B again with intent to kill. Okay, this time around the nature of the injury is different. No, so A shot B several times, three times, and it hit what? It hit his uh, major organs: the heart, the kidney, labas latian, intestine, and even the brain. Uh, what could be the nature of the injury be, be sustained? It's a mortal wound. Kung anong, kung hindi nyo alam, ibig sabihin ng mortal wound, panoorin nyo yung squad, squad game. Sobra-sobra mga mortal wound doon. Kaya lang, it's not time for you to, <laughs> it's not time for you to, 
to watch it because no ilang episodes yon mga seven episodes ata yan no baka hindi kayo mag-aral ay eh, tayo naghahabol na tayo sa criminal law kaya swerte kayo because i am now lecturing okay um eh, eh, this time it's a mortal wound eh, no so let's go to the elements of frustrated felony uh so frustrated, he performed all acts of execution, which would produce the felony, di ba? Natandaan nyo yung kanina. And secondly, uh, for reasons uh, uh, independent of the will of the perpetrator. So tingnan natin sa frustrated. Or any attempted. The nature of each injury is uh, mortal wound. So did he or did he, he did not perform all acts of execution? So he performed all acts of the execution, right? Right? So it could never be unattempted anymore. So titignan mo na lang if the other element of frustrated felony is present. Because it already satisfies the first requisite, which is uh, he performed all acts of execution, which would produce the felony. So it's a mortal wound. Now, ang next is, is it... Ang tanong, is it uh, dependent or independent? Dependent or independent of the will of the perpetrator or the will of the uh, accused in this case. Kung mortal wound, sa check. Tapos dito lang, dependent or independent? So let's, uh, let's add some more facts. If a leaves would be die of course why because it's a mortal wound now what if say for example uh, b was brought to the hospital who brought him to the hospital a uh, bystander somebody saw what happened to b uh, B was already lying on the floor, no, unconscious, and uh, a bystander, a good Samaritan, brought him to the hospital. And because of the uh, doctor, the timely medical attention given by the doctor, B survived. Nabuhay siya. Okay? So let's go. Is it, let's go back to the last element of frustrated. Is it dependent or independent of the will of the perpetrator? It is independent of the will. Because who brought me to the hospital? Was it A? No. It was a bystander, the Good Samaritan. And why did we survive? Because of the medical attention provided by the hospital through its doctor. Now, A has nothing to do with this. No? Why, why B survived? So it is deemed as um, independent of the will of the perpetrator. And so therefore, uh, this is a clear case of frustrated felony. All the requisites are there. Next illustration. Remember this illustration, ah. Pag si A, number one, intended to kill B, desisted, not liable. So, not liable for attempted. However, he is liable for the crime that he committed because there is a law that punishes that act, no? Uh, the, the, uh, the act of pointing a gun against another person constitutes the crime of grave threat, but not attempted ones. So A, second one, A shot B and he missed, that's yeah, attempted. Or if A shot B and only inflicted a uh, not a mortal wound, it's still attempted. No, yun. But if a shot B and uh, B sustain a mortal wound, check, and um, B survive independent of the will of the perpetrator or of A because somebody 
a stranger brought me to the hospital and uh, be survived, then it constitutes as independent of the will of the perpetrator. So this, this case is frustrated. I will give you a last illustration, number five. Ah, gandahan natin story. Ah. Si H at si W. Si H, therefore, is the husband. Di ba? And W is the wife. Si, G, si H, meron siyang si G. Sino si G? Si Paramour. Di ba? Ah, si Paramour. But he cannot marry G. Why? Because he's, he's already married to W. No? So sabi ni G, alam na patay na patay si H sa kanya. Iwanan kita dyan. I'm sorry, you, you cannot marry. We, you, you can't marry me. Tali ka. So panic ngayon si H. Dapat hindi kayo si G, ha? Mga kontrabida sa buhay. <laughs> okay. Nangyari, sabi ni... ano? I will file a petition for nullity of marriage based on psychological incapacity. Okay. Unfortunately, that, that petition was denied by the court. Okay. And when G learned, uh, learned, knew about it, then sabi niya, sorry, I have to go. Wait, 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 sabi ni H. Sabi niya, I still have one mission. And that's where he entertained already. A, 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 a criminal mind. That is what? To kill W. To commit the crime of parricide. So if he kills his wife, then he can uh, H can get married to G. Uh, wag, mas lalo wag kayong magiging H, di ba? Uh, ingatan yung puso nyo na hindi umibig ng sobra-sobra. Kung kayo tali, kung kayo talina, di ba? Lalo na kung alam nyo uh, mahina ang puso nyo at mapusok kayo sa pag-ibig. Okay. So sabi niya, Sabi ni H, uh, okay, I'll do it when, once we celebrate our uh, anniversary. So, I'll, ano sila? Nag-celebrate sila sa, nag-dine-in sila sa isang expensive restaurant. H is a physician. Doctor siya. Physician siya. So, he placed an antidote dun sa wine ni W while they were celebrating their 10th year. No? Uh, and true enough, no, because of that uh, uh, poison that he placed on the glass of wine of W. So W was at the point of death. Nangisay siya in front of H. No? So nalaglag siya sa, sa seat, sa chair. So nangisay siya. And at that point in time, Biglang na-recollect sa, sa ambilis sa mind niya, na-recollect niya, naps, oops, minahal ko rin minsan itong babaeng ito. Di ba? Biglang nag-flashback lahat. No? Yung pagbibigay niya ng mga bulaklak sa kanya. At number two, uh, she's also the, the mother of our two uh, children. Kawawa naman yung aking mga anak. Namahal niya rin. So what he... Uh, gave is, since he's a physician, no, he placed an antidote to this, uh, to W. He placed that on, on the mouth of W. Was, uh, w was dying in, uh, in front of him. And because of this antidote, okay, W survived. So, nilasan niya na lang si G. Ne joke lang. Okay. Mahal niya si Jean, hindi niya magagawa yun. But W survived. Oh, ang tanong is, is age criminally liable for an attempted or frustrated felony? Okay. Let's go to the elements of attempted. Okay, given na yun, okay na yung the first element. He commenced the commission of crime by overt act. Okay. May poison siya, ibinigay siya, ibinigay niya sa kay wife. Number two, um, did he perform? Did he or he did he not perform all acts of execution which would produce the felony? 
Di ba? Yun ang pinagdidapatihin natin kung attended our first day po. So, you will ask the question, what is the nature of the wound inflicted upon the baliw? Is it mortal or not mortal? Merong isang nagtanong sa akin, Sir, is it, the, ano yun, is it mortal or immortal? Is it mortal or not mortal or not fatal? It is fatal, di ba? Fatal yan eh. Ibig sabihin, nakakamata yan. No? So, would you consider that he, did he perform or not perform all acts of execution? He performed all acts of execution. So, X na si A, di ba? Si attempted. Ibig sabihin, X na attempted. It will not fall under attempted because um, in attempted, no? he, he did not perform all acts of execution. So, pasok tayo sa first stated. It met already the first element of first stated. Now let's go to the last element. The last, the last element is that uh, he, um, the crime was not produced for reasons what? Dependent or independent of the will of the perpetrator. So that's the, the, the thing that you'll have to ask. Is it, did W survive because H has something to do with it or not? Did he? Yes, he gave him an antidote because he's a physician. And because were, were it not for the antidote, W would have survived at that time. So meaning to say, yung acne age is what? Is the reason why the W survived. So it is dependent upon the will of H, no? the perpetrator in this case. And since it is dependent upon H, is it frustrated or not? Not also. So from this equation, he's not liable either for attempted as well as for frustrated felony. So is, does it follow that H is uh, scot-free? has no criminal liability? No, H is still criminally liable. Not for attempted parasite, ni neither for a frustrated parasite, but he would be liable for physical injuries. You know, depending on the injury. It's a serious physical injury, siguro, committed by, uh, by H against W, but not for attempted nor frustrated. So you will have to memorize you know, all these elements and understand all these elements. When you will be asked in the bar examination, when you will be asked in my exams, I will be looking for your argument and your argument is based upon the, you know, the legal basis, the requisites, the elements of attempted or frustrated and be able to apply the same. Okay, let's go to um, another one, which is... Conspiracy. Conspiracy. The law provides that when there are how many? You cannot conspire with yourself, right? Meron ng problema ang isip mo nun pagka I'm acting in conspiracy with myself. Diba? So there should be at least two at least two or more persons who come to what? An agreement. What is that agreement all about? To commit a, a felony or a crime. And there is a decision to commit the same. And they decide to commit the same. So there is an agreement as well as the decision to commit the same. What are the principles? Principles in conspiracy. Uh, number one is that mere conspiracy is not punishable. Mere conspiracy is not punishable. Why? What is the reason? Because it is only a manner of 
incurring criminal liability. So if you're asked, is, is conspiracy punishable? No, mere conspiracy is not punishable because it is only a manner of incurring criminal liability. But this is a general rule, meaning to say there is an exception. Well, there's an exception where mere agreement and a decision to commit a felony is already punishable. What is the exception? Except when there is a law that punishes the same. So we call it uh, what? Uh, uh, conspiracy as uh, conspiracy as a crime itself. Conspiracy as a crime itself. So whenever there is a general rule and the exception, now you check on the exception because if it does. If the exception is not applicable, most probably we apply the general rule. Bawa. Let's let's give an example. A and B conspired to kill X. The conspiracy is to commit the crime of murder. On the day that they have to execute, uh, the crime of murder. B appeared. A was absent. So, but pursuant to their agreement, B killed X. And subsequently, X was arrested. So, ang tanong is, uh, is uh, A criminally liable? No doubt for B, B is liable for murder. Siyang gumawa, siyang pumatay. What about A? Because subsequently, the uh, prosecutor, uh, upon investigation, found out that B was also A was also uh, a co-conspirator. So since he's, he's a conspirator, they charge him also of the crime. Now, Antanong, is A liable? So Antanong, did A perform any acts of execution? Aside from um, the mere conspiracy, did A commit any overt act in addition to the, agree the agreement? None, di ba? Well, at the day that they should execute the, the crime, A was absent. So A is not liable no, for any... Ano, uh, for any overt act because there's no overt act on, uh, that he committed. He's not liable for murder. But A, would A be liable as a conspirator or, or for conspiring to murder X? No. Why? Because there is no law that, pun there is no law that punishes conspiracy to commit murder. Meron ba? Well, none, di ba? So this is, uh, uh, mere conspiracy is not punishable. Remember that other ju our jurisdiction is that there is no crime when there is no law punishing such act. There is no crime when there is no law punishing the act. Nulem krimen, nule, puena, sene, lehe. Seran tanong. Almost the same. But what was the crime that they conspired to commit? The crime is rebellion. Kanina, ang conspiracy nila is murder. This time around is rebellion. So sabi nila, uh, aha, uh, September 1, uh, they conspired, A and B conspired to commit the crime of uh, rebellion. And they will execute it uh, on September 25. 
Come September 25, A did not appear. Only A appeared. And pursuant to their agreement, uh, uh, B committed acts of rebellion. No? Um, nagpasabog siya ng bomba sa Malacanang, but he was apprehended. Now, upon investigation, they realized, they discovered that A is also a co-conspirator. So question, what will be the criminal liability of uh, A and B? B did, A did not appear, di ba? So B is only the one who committed an overt act of rebellion. So B is liable for rebellion. What about A? What is the liability of A? Was there any overt act committed by A? None. His participation is only to conspire. So he's not liable for rebellion. Remember that there's diba, acts, uh, acts of execution. Walang acts, acts of execution, absent nga siya. Eh. But is A criminally liable? Yes. For what crime? Conspiracy to commit rebellion. Because there is a law that punishes mere conspiracy. So A will be liable for, to, for conspiracy to commit rebellion while B is liable for rebellion. No? Is there the bad the acts of one is the act, the act of one is the act of all? Yes. Pero in the case of A, wala siyang overt act. So hindi mag-apply sa kanya. Eh. For as long as A A was not present nga eh. Diba? So that principle, the act of one is the act of all. So can you give an example, sir, where there is the act of one is the act of all? Because that's one of the principle also in uh, conspiracy. So mere conspiracy is not punishable uh, except when there's a law that punishes the same. And secondly, uh, number two is that uh, when there is conspiracy, the act of one is the act of all. The act of one is the act of all. So how will you illustrate that? Kung di applicable, sir, itong dito. Because this one, the act of one is the act of all, not applicable because A did not appear. So what will be the example of the act of one is the act of all? A, B, and C. Diba? Conspired to commit the crime of rebellion. Ganun pa rin. Pursuant to uh, the agreement, uh, pursuant to the agreement, they will commit the crime of uh, rebellion in Malacanang by throwing hand grenade to overthrow the government of the Philippines. <clears throat> so the participation of B is to be the driver. A will be the one to throw the hand grenade. And then A is like, uh, will be, his ta task is to, uh, if that is a hand grenade, ito naman is to use yung kanyang M16 automatic rifle to kill all the, uh, the government officials in Malacanang. And that is to be the, uh, they plan on June 1 and they to take effect on uh, the following one, July 1. Comes July 1. Uh, anong picture? Anong nakita natin? Dumating ang July 1. Uh, nung June 1, sila ay nag, uh, nagplano. July 1, what happened? To A, B, and C. Okay. A did not appear. Nowhere to be found. And his task is uh, ano, to fire his automatic rifles. People, there. So, since uh, A was not present, okay lang, they pursued. So A drove uh, C to driver lang siya to Malacanang. And once inside the Malacanang, C threw a hand grenade. And he did. C was able to throw, to, to, to throw the hand grenade, but he was apprehended. The purpose is to overthrow the government. Question, what will be the criminal liability of A, B, and C? Si A, anong criminal liability? The person who did not appear. 
Is he liable for rebellion? No. But he is liable for what? Conspiracy to commit rebellion. Because uh, that is a mere agreement no, to commit a crime of rebellion is already punishable. So conspiracy to commit rebellion, there's a specific crime. What about uh, B and C? B and C are liable for actual rebellion. B question that decision. Sabi niya, parang unfair. No, unfair. Ako nag-drive lang eh. Wala mo akong ginawa. It was she who threw the hand grenade. If there is any liability on my part, it is only to what? Uh, as an, uh, as a, an accomplice. Is the argument raised by B tenable or not? Because it's only the driver. It, it was B who, um, it was C who threw the hand grenade. The argument raised by B is not tenable. Why? This is where the, we apply. No, the act of one is the act of all. The act of C in, throw, in throwing the hand grenade no, and to overthrow the government is the same act of B, although his participation is only the driver. And the driver of B is also the act of C. Ma? If they, why? Because there is conspiracy diba? prior. And B performed his act pursuant to the, the agreement, pursuant to their conspiracy. So in other words, parang pursuant yan sa script nyo. Itong script mo, B, eto plinano natin, B, driver ka. Dadalhin mo kami sa Malacanang. Ako magtatro na ang grenade. A, ikaw ang mga bumarel. Wala si A. Pero B, perform his act pursuant to their conspiracy. So he cannot escape from liability because he performs his role in the conspiracy as agreed upon. And, the, and since there is a conspiracy, the act of C is also the act of B. But that principle, the act of one is the act of all, is not applicable to A. Why? Because he was not present, nowhere to be found. Okay, very clear na yan. Eh? Next. A person is only, uh, mahaba ba ang lecture na to, liable for the crime that they conspired or agreed diba? to commit. So you're liable uh, to the crime that you agreed to commit. No? Ergo. So in the other words, there's oh, it, it is limited only. Liability is only uh, limited to the crime that they agreed to commit. So if there's a separate act, no, in other words, he is not liable for the act or the acts no, which is not agreed upon. Or in other words, if there is an independent act Act, which is uh, aside from the crime that they agreed, then uh, the, that person alone is liable. Person who, uh, person who committed that act is alone liable. And so general rule. Uh, this is the rule, general rule, and the exception. Person is liable for the crime, for all, uh, for the, all the acts committed pursuant to the conspiracy that A agreed to commit. 
liable only for the crime that they conspired to commit. If among the co-conspirators, no, one perform an act independent, separate, or not subject of the agreement, he alone should be liable for that specific act, but not all. I discussed it in my lecture in Caso Discurso. I don't know if you can still remember the exception. <clears throat> so if A and B and C agreed to commit the crime of theft, they are friends of the uh, victim X. Uh, they are the barcadas. So they cannot commit the crime of robbery because invited guests sila, pumasok sila. Eh. Sige, punta tayo. Sabi niya, uh, mayaman naman yung classmate na itong barkada natin. Sabi niya, okay, ikaw, uh, ang gagawin mo is uh, lahat tayo, mag-aamas tayo ng mga personal properties of X. So ikaw, go ka sa laptop, eto sa sa iPhone and then perhaps this one is for the jewelry. Alam naman niya may, may mga jewelry doon lang sa nakatago, nakalagay lang doon sa table ni X. So um when they celebrate, they they drunk, but you know, these are the thieves. They're able to got hold of this laptop A and B got hold of the iPhone C got hold of the jewelries of X but C went further anong ginawa ni C in addition to the uh, to stealing no to committing the crime of theft C molested committed acts of lasciviousness against X no so they were able to escape, but they were apprehended. So the question is, what will be the criminal liabilities of A, B, and C? Okay, what is the crime that they conspired to commit? Theft. Did they, did they perform all, all of this according to, 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 the, to their role? Yes. Were able to get hold of these uh, items? Yes. So it's a consummated theft. So A, B, and C will be liable for the crime of theft. Theft and theft. C, C, then. Bakit? Because that day is the crime that they uh, conspired to commit. So a person is liable for the crime that they conspired to commit. Check. What about the act of C molesting X? So merong ganun eh. Di ba? Uh, Anong gagawin natin sa act of violence uh, uh, as lasciviousness committed by C against X? C, in addition, would be liable for that independent act, which is acts of lasciviousness. Inipuhi po niya si X, di ba? So C alone should be liable, but not A and B. Bakit? Because that's not part of the agreement. The rule is that a person is liable only for the crime that they conspired to commit. In this case, no, it was only theft. But acts of lasciviousness is that part of um, our uh, agreement, then C alone will be liable for that independent separate act. Okay. Next. Is that an absolute rule? No, there's an exception. The exception is what I've said if there is a special complex crime. Special complex crime. Special complex crimes. Example of this, which is under Article 294, which is robbery with homicide. Next, robbery with rape. Robbery with intentional mutilation, among others. No? Uh, what does the law provide? What does the law provide? 
if by reason or on occasion somebody gets killed somebody dies or somebody was killed then all of them will be liable for robbery with homicide although although the killing or the homicide is not part of the agreement for as long as it is by reason or location of robbery Diba ang sinasabi na natin kanina, ang general rule is that a person is liable for the crime that I only agreed to commit. Independent act, not liable. Okay. Except when the crime is a special complex crime because it has its own rule under Article 294. And that is sinabi, if by reason or in occasion of robbery somebody gets killed, all of them will be liable for robbery with rape Even if, I'm sorry, robbery with homicide, even if homicide or the killing is not part of the agreement. Ano ibig sabihin yan, sir? Ganito lang yan. So, requisites. I, I will grab this to you. Number one, as the start, is that there is intent to gain. That's the essential element of robbery or theft is intent to gain. And then what? No, may intent to gain uh, before, during, or immediately after the robbery, somebody dies. And that would already satisfy yung word ng by reason or on the occasion of robbery. Again, now let me explain. At the simula, ano may sabihin sir ng reason or occasion of robbery? If at the, uh, the start, there is intent, intent to gain or intent to rob. Somebody dies before or somebody dies during, somebody dies immediately after the robbery, then all of them will be liable for robbery with homicide. No, even if that is not planned. And if even if uh, death results intentionally or unintentionally. Yung homicide referred to here is used in a generic sense. Hindi yan yung homicide do, uh, do sa, uh, sa RPC talaga sa after ng robbery. After the uh, murder, there is no crime of robbery with murder. Why? Because it's used again in you know, homicide. You here is used in a generic sense. Whether the killing is intentional or unintentional, it will fall on the robbery with homicide, even if the homicide. Or uh, is that part of the plan? Example. A, B, and C intended to rob X in his house. Pursuant to their agreement, no? Intent to rob lang. Wala nang iba. Marangal lang kanilang uh, hangarin. No? Kumuha lang ng magamit para mayroong pantawid gutom. A is the driver for someone to their conspiracy. B is the lookout. C is the one charged to amass all the personal belongings of X. No? Ang intent is to commit robbery. So they, she was successful. In uh, amassing all of these uh, personal properties, the, the watches. So, pagpasok na nila to, they forcibly open uh, the door. See, see. So, robbery yan, no? And he took all the personal properties, watches, uh, necklaces, 
I'm very slice of X. Sabi niya, parang lugi ako ah. Bakit sila, bakit ako lang? Sabi niya gano'n. So, there's a, a risk on my, my, on my part because if, you know, magising si X, then uh, I will, he will be able to identify me. So, she decided to stab and kill the X. And he did. Question. No, for what crime or crimes would A, M, B, and C be liable for? Now, sab, they were charged with robbery with homicide. Nagreklamo si A. Teka, teka mo, sabi ni A. Teka muna, that was not part of the agreement. No, si A pala ay naging estudyante ni Dean Pestin. Kaya lang nung nilelecture niya ito, absent siya. Of course, hindi siya estudyante ng eskwelahan na ito. No? Sa ibang, sa ibang skwelahan siya. So, sabi niya, tama naman. Napag-aralan niya. No? A person is liable only for the crime that they conspired to commit. Since we only conspired to commit robbery, she alone, alone should be liable for killing X. So, he will be liable for robbery with homicide. Sabi ni A, for us, we're not liable. Question, is the argument raised by A? Correct or not? The answer is not correct. Why? Because it falls specifically under special complex crime of robbery with homicide. And it, it provides that if by reason or negation of robbery somebody dies, then all of them will be liable for robbery with homicide. Even if the killing is not part of the conspiracy. Okay, that's number one. Number two. Almost similar but not identical. A, driver, B, look out, C, assigned to get inside. But this time around, he was able to get all the jewelries. But this time around, after A, B, and C were uh, in the act of escaping, hinabol sila ni X. X followed after then. But unfortunately for X, X fell down from the stairs and died. And they were charged with robbery with homicide. A, oppose the, the con contested the uh, charge against them because, you know, it's only robbery, he said. We did not kill X. X died accidentally. Is the argument, question, is the argument of A tenable or not? It's not. Why? Because it is by reason or negation of robbery. Even if that... Is unintentional. No, nilagay ko dyan. Liable pa rin for robbery with homicide. Kahit accidental lang, namatay si X. Third illustration. All the, the same facts, no? Except this time around, it was C. Sabi ni C, after amassing all those personal properties. And I was so excited. So he hurriedly went down from the stairs. Dito. Unfortunately, nalaglag siya. Oh, patay si C. They were charged with robbery with homicide. Sabi ni A, this time around, uh, this time around, we are not liable. Why? Because number one, we did not intend to kill anybody. Number two, somebody dies accidentally. Number three, the person who died is not X. The person who died is our brother. Sa, sa hangari na to, our brother. No? The co-conspirator. Number four, we did not kill our brother. Why, do we, why, why should we do that? He died accidentally. He fell from the stairs. He died kasi tanga siya. Yun lang, sabi niya. Question, is the argument of A tenable? The answer is still the same because it was happened by reason or on occasion of robbery. Somebody dies, then it's robbery with homicide. Okay? But if it does not fall, class, if it does not fall under any of these special complex crimes, 
then we go back to the general rule that the person is liable only for the crime that they conspired to commit. Now, remember, uh, this is the trick in the bar. These requisites must be present. All of these requisites must be present. Tatandaan nyo to. To fall on robbery with homicide. Or robbery with homicide. Or robbery with rape. No? Pag, uh, there was intent to gain in robbery with rape, but somebody was raped before, during, or immediately after. Na? Eh, sir, paano kung ganito? Uh, let's go back to this illustration sa baba. X natin yung intention nila. In, they do not intend to, to commit robbery. This time, they intend to kill. They intend to murder X. So the same. A is the driver. B is the lookout. C is assigned to stab and kill X. In, okay. And um, X successfully killed C. After killing C, nakita niya, merong jewelry box si, si C na tinatago. And he forcibly opened this uh, jewelry box. And alas, he was able to get hold of the, those expensive uh, jewelries of uh, C. So they escape again and they were apprehended. What will be the criminal liability of A, B, and C? Question, is there robbery with homicide? None. What was the intent? It was intent to kill. It's not intent to gain. So X na to. X na yan. Gano na yan. Okay? So we will now follow the general rule. Okay. So A, B, and C will be liable for all the crime that they conspired to commit, which is to murder the victim. So murder, A, B, murder, C, murder. And the act of one is the act of all. Ba? Kahit the driver lang siya, ang act na si act niya rin. Because they acted for so on to their conspiracy. Next. Um... What about the act of robbery? The act of robbery will all uh, be uh, um, C alone should be liable for the act of robbery. Why? Because it was not part of the plan. A and B will not be liable for robbery because um, it was not planned. C uh, performed that independent separate act. So C alone should be liable. Kung later on, binigyan niya nila si A, si A and B sa kotse, uy, nakakuha pala ako ng jewelry. Ito pala, oh. Hey, thank you. May bonus pa tayo. Then, the A and B will be liable as an accessories. As accessories to the crime of robbery. Eh, sir, paano kung ang, ano, uh, rape? Ito. So, balik tayo sa illustration, ha. This time around, uh, they still, uh, intend to commit the crime of robbery. So, ang crime nila is robbery. Robbery. A is the driver, B is the lookout, C is the one uh, charged to rob. So, successful naman. Ah, no, he was able to rob. Tapos tatokso siya. Sabi yung ganda pala nito ni X, direct niya si X. No? And they were able to escape and they were apprehended. So what will be the criminal liability of A, B, and C? Sabi, they were charged with robbery with rape. Sabi ni A, teka muna, teka muna. Si C, si C lang ang nag-rape. Kami hindi. Galit si A and B. Paano kung charge kami robbery with rape? No? Ang hangarin lang naman namin ay makakuha ng ng, ng counting mga jewelries at parang di ba? Para maibenta at makakain kami. But not to rape. She alone should be liable. Is the argument of A tenable? No. Because there is such thing, there is such crime of special complex crime of robbery with rape. 
if by reason or intention or, or by reason or an occasion of robbery, somebody was raped when before the robbery, during the robbery, or immediately after the robbery, then all will be liable for robbery with rape. So A and B and C liable for robbery with rape. So galit na galit ni C A K B K C. Nirek jasi C. De joke lang. Hindi kasama yun. Okay. <laughs> but let's go back. Yun ang mga principles no, sa uh, conspiracy. Next. Kinds of conspiracy. Kinds of conspiracy could be express and implied. When it's expressed, it's hard to prove express because you have to prove the actual agreement diba? and the decision to do that. So usually by experience, ito ay isang, uh, you, you need to get the testimony of a co-conspirator who will turn to be a state witness and pinpoint out the responsibilities of each and every one. Uh, and it's hard. Now, implied, you cannot prove the actual agreement, but you know the conspiracy can be deduced. You can deduce the conspiracy how? Deduce, okay. By, uh, if there is a uh, commonality of criminal design they acted or they acted in concert which has the same criminal uh, objective so there's commonality of criminal design they acted in concert no for the same criminal objective no. So yon. Now, you've got to remember that there's still another principle in, in, in conspiracy. Conspiracy, I, which I failed to mention. Please add that, that to your note. Conspiracy must be proven, must be proved as the crime itself. It cannot be based on mere conjectures suspicion nor you or gut feel hindi pwedeng feel mo lang ah siguro ko conspirator ito hindi pwedeng ganun hindi pwedeng uh, gut feel suspicion conjecture sa kahaka lang but it must be proved as the crime itself in conspiracy ipo-prove kasi nga the act of one is the act of all eh. ipo-prove mo that halimbawa dito Ipoprove mo na may robbery. Uh, Ipoprove mo na may murder, di ba? Pero ipoprove mo rin as the crime itself, yung conspiracy. Para lahat sila, lahat ng responsible, uh, they can be held accountable. Okay. I will give you two illustrations. And tell me if there's express conspiracy. A and B are friends. Pakinggan nyo ha. Huwag mo na antukin. A and B and friends. And while they're walking along the street, they saw X. Yung pala, no? B and X had an existing grudge against each other. No? Since high school. No? They're enemies. So... A and B are friends and then B, they chance upon X. By chance lang naman to. So B and X had an altercation. Sabi, uh, di ba? Nagmurahan sila. Si Raulo ko pala. Sabi, sabi, mga ganun. Until it became a heated argument to the point that A, B, slap X in his face. Bigla na lang sinampal ni B si X. And 
all of a sudden, all of a sudden, A went at the back of C and stabbed C repeatedly for 20 times. Another squad game. No? Question. Is there implied conspiracy between A and B to kill C at that time, at that point in time? Is there implied conspiracy? Meaning that their acts show criminality as uh, commonality of criminal design, uh, acted in concert, ano pa ba? There is uh, acted in unison. Uh, there's unity of purpose and execution. Yun ang mga description niya express ng implied conspiracy. Let's go back. Is there implied conspiracy? No, there is not. Uh, there's no implied conspiracy in this case. Uh, the, it's not clear whether they have the same criminal objective. The act of a uh, is uh, a is liable for uh, killing C because no oh, the the wounds inflicted shows that he has criminal intent to kill C because it's he inflicted 20, 20 wound wood uh, wounds wood stabs no stab wounds. What about A? Uh, what about B? What is the act of B? Only to slap C. Nothing more and nothing less. Right? So in this case, um, since there's no conspiracy, if there is no conspiracy, another principle, please write this down. If there is no conspiracy, a person is liable only for their own individual acts. Individual act or acts. So A would be liable for, in this case, since there's no conspiracy, A will be liable for his act of killing or stabbing uh, C, which causes death. B will be liable only for the crime of slapping C, which may constitute slander by deed, but not liable for the death of C. Next, illustration. Almost the same. A and B chance upon X. B and, A, B and X had an existing grudge. They had an altercation. But this time around, instead of slapping X, he pulled a knife and stabbed him, uh, X, repeatedly for 30 times. Lumabas ang ano? Lumabas ang puso, intestine, kidney, liver labas lahat yun pulang pula yeah. i don't know if you're able to uh, uh, listen to my to the actual case uh, in my lecture last uh, ano, yesterday ba actual yun no liver uh, pinakain sa pig and then they went out it's a true story ah eh? and then uh, uh, Sineparate, itinanggal yung, uh, yung head. Diba? And then chinap-chap ang, ano, ang body niya. Sa gruesome one. Ito, ano lang ito. Uh, sa akin, hindi true story. But that is a true story which I mentioned yesterday. And then, so, ayun. Uh, stab wounds. Uh, with, uh, mortal wounds, of course. A went at the back of X and... Uh, got hold of an iron pipe no? and hit X in, in his head repeatedly until ano lumabas? Yung utak na X. Okay. So what will be the liability of A and B? Is there implied conspiracy? Exaggerated na yan. Pero very clear, di ba? There is Implied conspiracy. There is a commonality of criminal design. There's unity of purpose and execution. And what it is the same criminal objective? To kill X. Why? Because the wound inflicted by B against X is very clear. No, it's a mortal wound. It's a fatal wound. 
What about the wound inflicted by A against X? It's also a fatal or mortal wound. Thus, no, thus it's there's conspiracy. The act of A and B, the act of A is also the act of B. The act of B is the act of A. We will apply the act of one is the act of all since there is conspiracy. No, if there's conspiracy, the act of one is the act of all. If there is no conspiracy, then they are all liable for their own separate or independent acts committed. So when this is asked in a bar, you have to determine, is there really an implied conspiracy or none? Because you will arrive at a separate, at a different conclusion. Okay. So we end with uh, conspiracy. The other ones would just be a codal provision. Light felonies. So Article 6, 7, 7. Light felonies are only punishable when they are consummated. Ergo, there is no uh, light felony of what? There is no... Sorry, there is no attempted nor frustrated felony. There is no attempted or frustrated felony. Why? Because light felonies are only punishable when they are consummated. And what is a light felony? Light felony is when a person is punishable with what uh, what is the penalty arresto minor when you talk about arresto minor it's only one month uh, one day to uh, 30 days or a fine of how much 40000 pesos or both so that's a light felony now we say that light felonies are not punishable except uh, our, uh, light felonies are only punishable when they are consummated. So there's no attempted or frustrated felony. Light, light, there's no attempted or frustrated light felony. Except, except when it is a crime against persons or property. Ergo, so therefore, there is an attempted uh, light felony of crimes against persons. There's a frustrated light felony in crimes against persons or property. Now, so titignan mo, you will, you will have to memorize what are those crimes against persons or property. Na light felony lang. Because there could be an attempted or frustrated ones. Now, if it is not a... if it does not fall against crimes against property or crimes against persons, then if there's a light felony, then it should only be punishable when they are consummated. Okay, next. Nine. Okay, grave felonies. Grave felonies, you are classification of felonies. You have grave, less, Grave, and you have light. Light is uh, when the punishment is what? Capital or afflictive. Light when it is uh, when it is correctional. Alam natin light eh. Arrest of minor, yung kanina, and a fine of not exceeding 40,000. When you talk about uh, capital, you talk about debt. Afflictive, memorize nyo to, no? Will be, uh, so, reclusion perpetua. So, reclusion perpetua is not a capital punishment. It is merely uh, afflictive. 
reclusion perpetua or you have got uh, reclusion temporal, you've got perpetual or uh, temporary absolute disqualification, you have perpetual or temporary special disqualification, you have prison by correctional, you have arrest, uh, prison correctional, arresto mayor, suspension, and destero. When you talk about light, you talk about arresto menor. Death and reclusion perpetua are just so you would know, uh, they are indivisible penalties. Meaning to say there is no minimum, medium, or maximum period. So, uh, paano mo ma-divide yung capital punishment? So, wala namang death, death in its maximum period, death in its minimum period. Siguro, mis, siguro sa ano, pagtanggal ang ano, pagtanggal ulo, maximum. Di ba? Pagkakalahati lang, mini, uh, medium. Pag nakakabit pa, bombo minimum period. Walang ganon. Walang ganon. So, reclusion perpetua, wala rin. Though, though it carries a penalty of ano, uh, 20 years, one day to 40 years. Yet, Supreme Court said that no, it's, 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 not a, it's not a divisible penalty. No, it's not a divisible penalty. Reclusion temporal, it is a divisible penalty. So it carries the penalty of 12 years, one day to uh, 20 years. Pag sinabing divisible, uh, binibigyan ko na kayo ng bird's eye view. No? You divide this into equally into three. You have the minimum, you have the medium, and we have the maximum period. 12 years, one day to 20 years. Now, let's go to prison correctional. Prison correctional carries the penalty of... Uh, I'm sorry. Prison mayor carries the penalty of six years, uh, one day to 12 years. And then prison correctional is six months, one day to uh, six years. Arresto mayor is one month, one day to six months. And arresto menor is only one day to 30 days. So pag arresto menor, walang mat, 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 you know, days. One day to 30 days. Then arresto mayor, one month, one day to six months. Then prison correctional, uh, six months, one day to six days. So, sir, bakit may one day? Eh, para di mag overlap, right? So, if it's six months, then they will overlap with a prison correctional as well. So, so we finish this one. Let's go to uh, Article 10. Uh, it only simply means that, um, well, they have different rules. Uh, they have different characters, uh, the vice penal code and that of crimes punished under the special penal laws. But uh, the RPC has supletory character in the special penal laws. Now, let's discuss on the differences between the two. RPC, crimes committed under the revised penal code compared with that of crimes committed under Special penal laws, RPC, and special penal laws. So we say that um, in RPC, it's bala in se. In special penal laws, it's bala prohibita or malum prohibitum. What does it fall? What does it mean? When you talk about mala in se, mala in se connotes that it is evil in its nature. Evil in its nature. So, antano, is it 
killing a person. Killing a person is evil in its nature. Di ba? Raping, raping somebody is evil in its nature. What about carrying a gun? Carrying a gun is not evil in its nature. Why? You can protect your family, yourself, by using a gun. Now, you will only commit a crime if, you, uh, if that gun is not uh, registered. So because, or not, not licensed, because you can be charged of illegal possession of firearm. So yun yun. it's not evil. There, it's only, there's a crime because there is a law that punishes that act. And the person is guilty for voluntarily violating that law. Okay, number two. Since it's mala in se, no, it said therefore, uh, there is, uh, as I mentioned, criminal intent is an element. Here, it's not an element. No, prosecution does not have to prove the criminal intent of, of the offender. In, in the RPC, you've got to prove, like um, intent to gain in robbery, like uh, in killing a person, intent to kill is an element of, of the crime. So there's specific intent for specific uh, crimes. No? Next. Since it's balanced, eh, therefore, good faith is a proper defense. Can I call the, my, my previous lecture? What is the, um, since uh, how in, in RPC, there's criminal intent, then you can negate it by uh, showing good faith. SPL, good faith is not a proper defense. So, say if you're carrying a gun and i'm carrying a gun to do protect myself no it's not a proper defense good faith no it's not a proper defense sir now we uh let's go back to the first one sir uh will there be cases where, where although it's an rpc yet it's not mala in say but it's mala prohibita yes but this is the general rule no rpc is mala in say so give an example where it's an RPC yet it is mala prohibita. Technical malversation. Technical malversation is mala prohibita although it's punished under the Vice Penal Code. You know, sir? Yes, because in technical malversation, no, uh, uh, under the RPC, we call it that as, il as illegal use of public funds. So there's no misappropriation in uh, technical malversation. So there is a law that specifically uh, there is a law that allocates for the use of the public of a public fund. No, there's a public fund allocated by law or ordinance for a particular public purpose. Example: uh, in a local government, say some municipality, where an, a public fund is allocated for the construction of of a public library. Uh, so yon. Number two, that public uh, fund is used for another public use. That that public fund is used for another. That public fund is used for another public use, other than for which it was intended. Other than for which it was intended. Then um, yung kaninang uh, construction of a public library, di ba? It was uh, uh, set aside for because there is a law uh, passed upon by the local government in a certain municipality. Now, what happened is that there was, assuming that there was an earthquake, you no, know, and that fund was used for rehabilitation of the municipality. So there was no base appropriation except that it was that public fund intended for a public construction of a public building was used for rehabilitation purposes. So good faith naman, can you raise the, uh, the mayor as well as the uh, local Sangonian? Can they raise good faith as a defense? No. Because um, it is, although it's an RPC, it is deemed as mala prohibita. Sir, meron bang SPL which is not mala prohibita, but it's mala in Yes. 
plunder. Just like the lecture I'd make in class of discourse. So plunder is an S is a special penal law, and yet it is mala in se. It is evil in its nature. So there's criminal intent that prosecution has to prove, and that the uh, accused may raise good faith as a matter of defense. Okay. So tandaan yun. What else? The stages of execution and number five, uh, persons criminally liable. When you talk about uh, stages of execution, yung, the, the ones that we lectured kanina, it's the consummated, frustrated, and attempted stages. When we talk about persons criminally liable, we're talking about the principals, the accomplices, and the accessories. Why, why, why do we have to determine that in crimes punishment in the RPC in order to arrive at the proper penalty? And so far as um, SPL is concerned, uh, this is not applicable because uh, the offender is deemed uh, uh, the stage is deemed to be in, in a consummated stage. And there's also no persons criminally liable because it is the, uh, the offender is deemed to be a principal. You don't know. Unless, unless the SPL uses this. Unless the SPL uses this. There are, time, there are certain uh, SPLs no, that uses the stages of execution, that uses persons criminally liable. But generally, uh, the offenders are only the principals and it is deemed to be, have been committed in a consummated stage. Just so, no, para malama, ma, you have, although we will be discussing this, uh, just so that you will have an idea. So consummated, frustrated, attempted. How do we determine the penalty to be imposed? Ito, illustrate ko to, illustrate ko tong dalawa na to. Ah. Consummated, frustrated, and attempted. Then we have the principles, the accomplices, and the accessories. The, penal Ay, sorry. the penalties provided for under the revised penal code is deemed to be imposed uh, upon a person, upon a principal on a consummated stage. Uh, so, yun, yun. Deemed to be imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage. So, if it is committed by an accomplice, it's one degree lower than that imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage. Accessories is two degrees lower than that imposed upon a principal on a consummated stage. If it is committed in a frustrated stage, it's one degree lower. If it's attempted, it's two degrees lower. Ito lang yun. So that you would know. That's how we compute. No, that's why we, we determine the stages, the person's criminal liable, because it will affect the proper penalty to be imposed. Next. Number six would be uh, the rule of offsetting. Rule of offsetting. Or the appreciation of what we call as the uh, mitigating and aggravating circumstances. Now, Articles 11 to 12, justifying, exempt, exempting. We will go into Article 13, which, is, which are the mitigating circumstances. We will be discussing after that Article 14, which are the aggravating circumstances. Why do I have to study that? When, when I was in, in, in law school, I was studying that. I was reading it. What, what's the significance of studying all these mitigating and ag aggravating circumstances? Simple. Because it's also determined uh, to to it's also used to determine the proper penalty to be imposed. No, uh, did, uh, 
pag ito uh, let, let me illustrate this one so you so so you will be compelled to memorize because if you're not able to memorize what are the mitigating aggravating when we reach the ano, after midterms you, you will find it difficult know how to offset and you cannot arrive kasi pagdating sa finals no we will be discussing on uh, uh, penalties pag zero mitigating zero we're talking about divisible penalties pag, this is significant this role is for divisible penalties now from reclusion temporal down so if uh, zero mitigating, zero aggravating, we, we uh, impose the medium period. Ay, hindi na ka siya. Um, zero mitigating, one aggravating, we impose the maximum period. Uh, maximum period. This is maximum. Pag zero, zero, medium sa gitna. When it is... Um, one mitigating zero aggravating then it is on the minimum and then you offset so if there are assuming if there are three mitigating as against one aggravating then you will apply the rule of setting then apply it in the minimum period that's why we determine that the same thing penalty no four five and six now with respect to number six, uh, this one, NA also, not applicable. So even, even if there is a plea of guilt, which is, uh, I will entertain the question after my lecture now. Assuming that, um, assuming that there are mitigating circumstances of plea of guilt, voluntary surrender, but if the, the crime is SPL, we do not appreciate that to lower or uh, increase the penalty. Next. Dean, uh, sorry po. Yes. Sorry po to interrupt. Nawala po yung screen nyo. Ah, talaga? Opo, black screen na po siya sa amin. Sayang, kanina pa to. Uh, we we just noticed now lang din po. Kala po namin lag lang kami but yes um uh, major majority of the class po has said na nag black screen daw po sila. Oh, okay. Sige. Apo. I mean kayo po yung nag black screen po. Okay. Oh, can you see? Can you see, can you see me? Apo, apo. Okay. So it's that black. It's me, right? <laughs> I mean, yung, yung share screen nyo po nag-blocks. Kaya kala ka lang din po kanina nag-vlog lang po yung... Oh, this lang. one. This one. Yan po, din Okay na po. Thank Anlayo you po. Na, oh. Anla you, you, you didn't see all of these tables? Uh, no, din uh, Nakita naman what? po namin. Um, yung sa what? ano lang po. Dun sa table po ng color. Pangalawang red po. Ah, sa, oh, sa, divisible right. pe, sa divisible. This one. Apo, apo. Okay, so zero, zero, zero mitigating, zero aggravating, medium. Zero mitigating, one aggravating, maximum. One mitigating, zero aggravating, minimum. And then you offset na, number four. Just in case, arimbawa, there are three mitigating as against one, then it's in the minimum period. This is the rule of offsetting. That's why we, we study that. That's what... At, at least now you, you you would know the beauty of this. Why do you have to study the mitigating and aggravating? Because I don't know, we, this will help us understand on how to arrive at the proper penalty to be imposed. Why do we have to study the principles, accomplices, and accessories? What will be the significance? Because the uh, the penalties are different for uh, for those who committed the crime as a principal, as an accomplice, or an accessories. Why do you have to determine the, the stages of execution which we discussed a while ago? So that we would know if we, uh, what penalty to be imposed upon them. Because 
their specific rules and formula as shown this on how to arrive at that. But that's specifically for RPC and not for SPL. No? Uh, as a general rule. Now, lastly, nomenclature of penalties of RPC. The one, this is uh, peculiar to RPC only, but not for uh, SPL. What do you mean, sir? Um, rec reclusion, perpetua versus life imprisonment. This was this this was asked in the bar exam before. How distinguish RP uh, reclusion perpetua to life imprisonment? Reclusion perpetua is a nomenclature of penalties under the revised penal code. Life in, uh, life imprisonment is under special penal law. And RPC uh, reclusion perpetua carries the penalty kanina as I mentioned. Uh, 20 years, one day to 40 years. Life imprisonment, none. Because it's actually literal. Life imprisonment. Yan. So this reclusion, perpetua, prison mayor, reclusion, uh, correct, uh, prison correctional, uh, these are penalties under the RPC and not SPL. SPL, there's a specific penalty provided for by law. Unless, unless, this is, that is only the general rule. Unless the SPL adopts the nomenclature of penalties under the revised penal codes. So we end now with Article 10. And uh, thank you. Uh, we can now stop sharing the. Uh, we can stop recording already. <laughs>